Thank you for being here. Well, welcome everyone to another American TESO Presents Free Friday Webinars. I'm your hostess, Shelly Sanchez Terrell. And today we are going to talk about extensions to support language learners. If you go to americantesocom slash blogger, you will see a recent post that I created and it has these extensions listed and a few others. I'm going to go ahead and share with you some new findings that I found this week. And if you don't know what an extension is, that's okay, because I will also introduce you to that as well. Now, the reason why I chose this picture in the front here of the computer is because when you surf the web, you surf the web through a browser. And your browser is has many, many features that really empower your language learners. And if you teach your language learners how to use these free features, then you'll be able to help them study language well after they finish your class um, and be able to really get into learning, enhancing their listening, reading, writing, research, um, and speaking skills as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, I want to let you know that extensions help students with reading, writing, studying, digital research, and translation. There are also on your computer, especially if you use Chrome, um, and there are different browsers, and I'll show you extensions for the different browsers. You can have, whether you use Safari, you might use Opera, you might use Firefox, that's a, one of the most popular ones, Internet Explorer. Or my favorite is Chrome, because with Google Chrome, you're able to find all of the extensions that you see today. There's tons of free ones, and there's tons of free apps within the browser um, that really help students, um, and they really improve skills as well. So I'm not going to introduce you to any of the apps today, because that could get a little confusing. But I will show you how, even if you don't have Chrome, how you can still access these different extensions. To find out more and, and to also see some other extensions, then you can look at shellyterrell.com slash Google. So this is what an extension is. When you go on your browser, you can click on the little icon. It's on the side of the Omni bar. In some cases, I believe like maybe Safari, um, it's on the left of the Omni bar. But in other cases, uh, the extension is on the right of the Omnibar. So when you have an extension, it's really cool because once you click that icon, it's something a little box pops up and something magical happens. You can do something with it. So for example, with this one, when you click on it, it's the Digo. And if you click on that little Digo icon, this little box comes up and it allows you to save whatever website you're on and you can read it later. You can take a screenshot of the website. You can share the website really quickly. You can bookmark it, you can tag it, you can even share it with a group. So that's just one way, just one extension and look how many options you have with that. Before the extension, you wouldn't have been able to do that with your web browser you would have had to either use another app, maybe write down your notes. So with your with extensions, your students in seconds have access to so many features that really help them study, read, take notes. Um, it's really, really powerful for them. And when I introduce extensions to students and teachers, they're always really amazed. It's like they are saying magic, but it is something that is possible. So depending on what kind of um, browser you have, they're not always called extensions. For Chrome, it is called an extension. Um, for other ones, I believe it's called, um, oh, I forgot what it's called. But they have different names for them. But where you'll find it is usually if you go to the window. And if you go to window, you can find where you have these different extensions. Um, sometimes you can also find it if you go to the store. So, for example, with Firefox, then you'll be able to go to the Firefox store, um, the Firefox store, the Mozilla, 
and that's where you're going to be able to find those extensions. Internet Explorer has different ones as well. Um, so there's different options, Opera, things like that. So what you have to do is you have to look on the actual browser tabs. Um, here you see where it says Chrome, and that's where you can find it. Now, when you're looking at the window and you go to the extensions, then that's going to show you where you can do a search for the kind of extension that you're trying to have help with. So, for example, if your students want to improve their reading and writing skill, then they can click on extensions. You can find other things in the store as well, apps, themes, stuff like that. So it's important to click extension. When you click on that, you can hear, for example, I put in the search box writing. But your students can put language, they can put English, they can put vocabulary, they could put listening. So there's so many different options um, that they can try doing a search for. These are some of the recommended extensions that I think are really great for language learners and learners in general. The absolute best one that I love that I think all teachers should introduce to their students is Premium Read and Write. This is actually free for teachers. All you do is you go to Read and Write, the website, and when you go there, you're going to see a little box. I believe it's on the right side, and it says Premium for Free Teachers, so it's pretty easy to see. You have to go to the main site to be able to click on that. So go to the main site. You can click on that, um, and then when you go there, you're going to be able to download the extension. It's going to give you all these great features. And just to show you a few features, so some of the features are, it lets your students highlight paragraphs, anything on the web. So PDFs, if you have a PDF and they're reading an article and you have it on a PDF, they can upload it, they can highlight it, it will be read aloud to them. If they're still um, struggling, then they can have it translated in their own language. It highlights text and also it'll um, put it in different colors. It color codes it to make it easier to read for, um, for your language learners. It also has when they type, when they're working on, for example, their Google Doc. If you have them do work on a Google Doc and they're writing a paper or research paper or any kind of paper, then it helps them with their writing. It suggests um, different words, like what it anticipates, it, depending on the sentence, what the next word will be in case they're kind of stuck. Um, it gives them synonyms. Um, it also can simplify text and summarize it for them, which is really great because when your language learners are doing a lot of research, that sometimes it just is overwhelming um, and they might struggle with CALPs and BICs. And by CALPs, I mean academic writing or academic um, English, which happens to be in a lot of research. These are words that they're not familiar with, and, and it could be very, very confusing. So that would be really, really great for them to be able to um, figure out what the article and the research is really saying. Um, it also has speech to text, so they can talk, and it'll, it'll actually type the words for them. Um, which could be really useful if you have not only language learners, but you also have learners that have learning needs, learning disabilities. Um, you can also create voice notes. So there's so much, um, so many options with this one little extension. You just click it, and then you can do so much with it. So this is an idea of how it highlights the text in different colors to be able to make it to where your students are able to go, for example, here we have Wikipedia, and it's talking about the Olympic Games, and it highlights different words for them. Um, but it does so much more, and I think it's really, really just a great um, tool for your learners. It's a really great extension for your learners. Another extension I think is really great for learners in general that helps them study is called Nuggets. So when your students are browsing online, they're on a website, they're doing research, whether it be animals, whether it be for a restaurant that they are creating with another partner, that is an activity that they get my students to do. 
And what they usually do is they have to do background research. And when they're doing research of different menus, different options that they can include in the restaurant, well, nuggets could be pretty good because what it does is it basically just gives them a little kind of sticker. They only have 200 characters and they go and they type in really quick whatever, if, whatever they want from that website, any information. If they're studying vocabulary, let's say that they just are studying for a quiz or a test and they need notes, they just want to take fast notes. It's great that it makes it in only 200 characters or less because that's something that your students can um, keep in their brain. And what it does is it pops back with that note that they type. So if whatever they wrote on that particular one, these nuggets will come back to them while they continue browsing. It'll pop up every, um, every once in a while. I think that they can uh, even dictate the time or they can choose the time five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, and it just gives them that little nugget to study from. So, and they can categorize those different little nugget notes with hashtags, um, and then they can also, um, they can, they can um, organize them in different ways too. There are two different extensions that read aloud, and this is something that a lot of teachers like and a lot of students like is when when sites are read aloud to them. And the best ones, according to teachers, are Speak It and Announceify. I prefer Speak It. The reason I prefer Speak It is because Speak It lets you highlight the text that you want read. Announceify will read the entire uh, web page. I mean, you can pause it, you can um, decide, you know, um, how loud, things like that. But it's very useful when students get to hear um, spoken, what is spoken. So I think Speak It is, is the better one. Um, and that's the one I would recommend. Both are free. And you can see here that when you click on the extension, it comes up and it's really easy. Um, it has this little icon and that's all this does is it, it, it's able to read aloud what is on the site. It can even do, I believe, PDFs and things like that. So if you have any kind of lessons or anything that you create, you can always upload it as a PDF or Google Doc and it'll, it'll speak it. <laughs> um, but the great thing about those two tools are they also improve listening skills. Um, and it can also help if when words are pronounced a certain way and your students maybe struggle with pronouncing words, then they're able to, they can, they can sometimes just repeat the word as it is spoken and it can help them with pronouncing words correctly or where the stress is and the accents. One specific extension that goes with an app, um, a free app, they do have a free version. Um, there are many different types of extensions that go along with Duolingo. The one I have chosen to sh show you here is Duolingo Vocabulary Manager. Now, Duolingo supports many different languages, French, Spanish, um, many, many different languages. And what it does is while you're browsing through the web, it allows you to gather up different vocabulary words. You can even, um, after you collect all these words that you want to learn, that your students want to learn, it also has it to where they, it puts it in quizzes. So they actually have quizzes that pop up that come with the um, vocabulary words. So it's a way to learn vocabulary, really build your vocabulary. You can even go against other people who use Duolingo. Um, it does work in conjunction with the Duolingo account, so your students can register for the free version of that if they want. ReadLang is another uh, great language learning app. And what it does is it allows you to create a word list and then it turns it into a flashcard. So you can study it while you're browsing through the web. You can collect different words. Uh, your students can collect different words that they see online and say, hey, that's a really interesting word. Um, it puts a dictionary. Um, it also has where your students can... Um, they can look at the flashcards, they can test themselves, it gives them uh, fill in the blank sentences. So you can see the different, um, how it looks right here. And that pops up right on your browser. So that's a great way to help your students um, be able to translate words and also help them remember words. 
Me too. I love creating <laughs> flashcards. But one of the great things about uh, creating um, Quizlet is my go-to, and I love Quizlet. Unfortunately, they don't really have a um, Quizlet um, extension that is really that great. Um, and that's what I normally would recommend, except this is so fast to create it with Readlang that your students can just do it in the browser in seconds instead of having to go to Quizlet and create all the flashcards. But I definitely would recommend Quizlet um, if you for your students. That's a great app as well. Another great tool that I recently found, and this is a newer one I found, is called is where it, when you click the extension, it pops up as where your students can create a quick mind map of that website. So it, it's not a fancy one. It, it just is a basic mind map. But I think that it's really, really wonderful um, to be able to have uh, where you can so whatever they're reading whatever article you have or anything like that with this extension they're able to really is go into it by creating a mind map of it and i love um these kind of um tools or web tools that allow this so instead of going to another site like poplet or mindmeister or any of the great mind mapping apps this one's so easy because it's just pops up and then they create a basic mind map within seconds and then they're able to retain the brain is able to retain the the chunk of what is the gist and the subject and the context and the keywords and stuff of whatever website that they were on exactly as kathy says in the chat box um love that it breaks down into everything <laughs> oh okay and peggy short mentions quizlet is a great app but quizless Quiz is is one that teachers are starting to prefer and recommend. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, and actually, in an article I recently put on assessment tools, quiz quizzes was mentioned because they have memes. So that is something good to know. So the next extensions help with grammar. I'm going to go through those. My favorite one is Ginger. I think that's the one of the best ones. There's also, I'm going to show you Grammarly, which is the more popular one. And Grammarly is popular because they do a lot of the same things that Ginger does. It said Ginger gives you a little bit more for free. So some of the things that you have to pay for for Grammarly, Ginger will give your students for free. So I don't know how long that will be um, while I keep telling people this. So maybe I shouldn't, but <laughs> you just click the little G and you're able to translate define and gives you synonyms it really helps with writing when your students are for example composing an email even doing a status update if they're on facebook and twitter um they're able to it's able to correct their grammar um it also if they're on a google doc it really helps them with their writing it highlights different sections i think this is really great because a lot of students, when they're writing, they just need that extra help. They need, uh, sometimes like me, I'm constantly writing. Whenever I blog post, I usually have one or two errors at least, and somebody's nice enough to come back and tell me, hey, Shelly, you have a, an error here. I don't think that's correct. Um, and the reason why is if I use one of these tools, then uh, it actually helps a lot. Um, because sometimes it's not that I don't know that I misspelled something or it's not that I, but sometimes it's that your students are just focusing on the writing, which is what you want them to do, and they might miss a few edits. This is what Grammarly looks like. Grammarly will even do it with your, um, but recently when I was doing a webinar before on extensions, I was shown that Grammarly, you have to be 18 years old or older. That's actually what it says in the terms of agreement. So that's something I don't like about it. But if you do teach higher ed or if you teach um, if you teach college level or adults, then Grammarly is really great. Um, they have a great Facebook page with some of the best grammar memes I have ever seen. You can also follow them on Twitter. And those memes, if anything, that's what I use a lot. Um, but a lot of the things that Grammarly does, Ginger does as well. And I think that it's free, so that's good. So there are other extensions that will help you bookmark, annotate, and curate. These, um, these bookmarks, are, um, one of the ones I just showed you at the beginning is Digo. Digo is really great. It's, it's a way to collect all your favorites when you're on the web. 
if you see if your students see a page they really like then they can save it um, they can add tags and it really just helps them research so what it does is they can even search later for it I use this all the time they can annotate annotate means where you can actually draw you can um, write notes um, it has so many features and I really like when a, when um, extension allows your students to engage, to draw, take notes, annotate, add a sticky to the actual website, because then it goes beyond them reading, then you can get them to comprehend, to really think about it, to really grab the key concepts. So that's why I think extensions are very, very powerful because they allow your learners to just go beyond. Sometimes your learners will kind of read. Sometimes they're not in the mood to read. Sometimes, a lot of times, especially when they're looking at a screen, it's difficult for them. I know that I, when I'm doing reading for learning, I like to highlight and everything like that. The great thing is that with these extensions, it doesn't ruin the website. Um, your learners can keep going because it doesn't ruin the website for anyone. <laughs> they can still highlight and everything. Uh, Genius is another way to do collaborative annotation. So what it does is it puts a box up and all of the students in your class can actually annotate on the same site. It puts this pop-up uh, pop box and then they can, uh, one of the students can add, oh, this, I found this really interesting on this website. Did you know annotation um, is when you can highlight? And then another student can reply to that and say, yes, and not only can you, um, add, uh, can you highlight, but annotation also can mean taking notes. You can write a little note. So there are different ways that your students can collaborate on a document together. Now, I'm glad that Peggy George put the extension inside the chat box. And the reason why is because if you go to the main site of Genius, you're going to see how it also is a database for collecting and editing rap lyrics. It is the same company, but that's not what you want to do. You want to actually go to the extension, although your students will probably like um, the rap lyrics part too, <laughs> like my students. <laughs> uh, there are also extensions for citing resources. There are two that um, teachers usually like a lot. Um, for me, the best one is Cite This For Me, but there's also EasyBib. EasyBib has a great app where you can actually um, scan the barcode. You just go and you scan the barcode of books, and it automatically puts it in your choice. APA, Chicago style, MLA style, um, in, or even Harvard style um, for the bibliography. So it's one way for your students. Cite this for me, I think, has m more free options. Easy bib, after a while, it's going to make you pay. So I prefer cite this for me. Um, and it's not always perfect. So it's going to help your students and it's going to be faster to create a works cited bibliography or reference page. But your students are going to have to go back and fix it. Um, and but it makes it much easier because it grabs the information. It'll even put it in um, a, a Google Doc for them, or create um, create a work cited bibliography for them. Some more great extensions that are worth mentioning. So if you do work with a group of students and there's diverse needs, then you may have a student. And this has happened to me with my language learners. I've had quite a few students that are dyslexic. If you have students that are dyslexic, the best extension for them is open dyslexic which will change the font of the website into a friendly font for them where they'll be able to read it and it does it on any website so even if the uh, teacher asked me before will it do it in different languages well if the website is in spanish um, in german in french it doesn't matter it's just changing the font so it'll change the font to where it makes it friendlier. They've done research with this particular font and it's, it really helps um, students that are dyslexic. We're talking about languages and part of languages is programming languages. So not only language, English language, but learning to code 
is actually really great for students as well. It really helps them develop the basics of also learning a language like English and French and things. So I wanted to mention this one. I learned about it by um, Peter Vogel uh, on Twitter. And what he says is, um, um, this is in beta, but it's where with Chrome, and this is only with Chrome that I've seen so far, is where your students can actually learn to code with this extension. So they click on the extension and they can start off with very simple coding. Um, and then they can go to even more and they can look at websites, they can see how they are coded and it just really helps them with coding. One of the really great extensions that I use a lot um, and I think it's really useful for teachers and students, you can create a video with this. So if you want something where you can actually take record everything that's happening on the screen. Your students can do how-to videos, they can do tutorials, or you can create really fast tutorials for your students. Or let's say that you just want to, your students, you're looking at their paper on a Google Doc and you want to give them some tips and stuff. Um, you know, you want to highlight certain things and you want to say, hey, you can make a screencast. You can, with Nimbus, you can make a screencast video you can also do a screenshot. You can make a visual tutorial. You can write on it. It gives it colors. It takes the screenshot. It lets you crop it. It lets you um, add arrows and circles. It even lets you just draw. So Nimbus is a really great way to take a screenshot and also make a screencast video. A better tool for making screencasts on just using your browser, and these are free, and it's good because Snagit was a tool that a lot of teachers used, which is now um, is going away. So these are really good options. So Screencastify, you see how you just click and then it records. See, that's it. It's very, very easy. You can then stop the recording. It gives you the resolution. Um, every time you click on extension, it gives you different options. And within those options, you can always change things like you might want to change, for example, the mic level, um, also the resolution, so your videos aren't so big. The other app that I use all the time is, um, or extension is, and I also use as an app, is Pushbullet. So Pushbullet, and you can see my little, um, here, this is my Pushbullet. And so what it looks like is, I have the app on it too, but and I use the Chrome extension, and what it does is when I click it, it takes anything on my phone. A lot of times I have pictures and stuff I take on my phone and I just want to transfer really fast in seconds to my browser. Well, with Push Bullet, it does that. It also lets me send it to a group um, that I uh, want to, a link, a website. Sometimes I copy tweets and I send them because I want to post them in different social networks, but I want to do it on the web. They're just You can send so many things. So you, your students um, can, create a group with your students and you can send them things. You can just keep sending it. You can also use it to, for example, um, send SMS. So you can just send messages to, to the group. You don't have to just send them links or images. You can also send them links. And the great thing is if you have push bullet on your Chromebook or on your, um, on your, I use a MacBook, but on my MacBook, anything, let's say I wanted to change it and I wanted to go on my phone or my iPad. Well, it's all in push bullet, so they'll send it to my phone and iPad. If I have a picture, um, sometimes I have really old pictures, or I'll make a picture online, like a Canva or an infographic, and I want to send it to my phone so I can tweet it later, well, then I can always do that. I can just use push bullet. Um, it's great if you're team teaching. So if you work with other teachers, and let's say you want to – um, give each other notes, you're working on a project together, you can use it as a messaging app as well, and a way to gather different types of um, information. So Push Bullet's a great way to do that if you want to send it to um, different teachers. Now I showed you different, different types of extensions, and I have like 50 or 60. But if you have 50 or 60 extensions, the problem is it's going to really slow down your browser. And so I recommend you only have three or four on at a time, if that. Um, and the way that you can turn them off without, without taking them off is you need the Extensify extension. 
So, I mean, extensity, extension. Extensity, what it does is it comes up with a box, and all you do is when you're using that particular extension, you click it, and it'll turn on. When you are not using it, like this one right here, I just click it, and it turns it off. So it's really fast, really easy to do, and it'll take it away from here. It'll take it away from um, the actual right side of the Omni bar. So extensity is the definite must. Because if you have 20 different types of extensions, um, it really does make your browser go very, very slow. I was thinking for a while it was my, um, my, actual, um, my actual computer, but then I realized that it was not. It was actually that I had too many extensions. <laughs> Reduce the, plus it clutters it, and I don't like clutter on my browser. Um, reduce time grading. I'm going to show you some apps for teachers that are great. If you want to use rubric, then a grade with a rubric if you do that. And I do that a lot because I have a lot of uh, projects that need writing scores and things like that. So if I want to do that, I use Gubrick. Gubrick is an extension. It's also an app. Um, and it's something that you use along with Google Docs. So you do have to use Google to be able to use Gubrick, but it pops up with the, when you click the extension, it pops up with um, with the rubric. You can upload different rubrics. It's the same rubric, and it's really easy. You just put in the number. You can write in a quick comment. It takes seconds to grade. It really has saved me so much time grading. So this is what it can kind of look like, too. You design the rubrics. You can use rubrics from um, anywhere. There's a lot of times you'll find um, on you know, templates, Google templates, free rubrics. I have a lot of free rubrics in my book, uh, Learning to Go. I have tons of rubrics that teachers can upload here. And then you just adjust it the way you want. You give your students a quick score. You just type in the score after looking at their project. You can even do it with uh, Google Slides, anything like that. So any kind of presentation, you can grade it with the rubric. I mean, it's just really, really fantastic. Makes your grading so much faster. And what then what it does is, after you finish, it'll average it, and then when you write the quick comment, it sends that all to a spreadsheet, and it updates the student's grade. You can, you can make it do that, or you can make it even send an email to the student and the parent. It automatically, you, you automate this. You don't have to do it. It automatically goes, and then it shows them the grade they got. So it's quick grading. You know, your students are always asking. Um, I know some students here, some college students, they keep complaining. They say, my professor hasn't given me my paper or hasn't graded it in three weeks or two weeks. And that's really too long. Um, a lot of teacher, a lot of research says that students need immediate feedback, that they're not going to be able to do better on their other assignments or it prevents their learning growth um, if they're not given that feedback fast. So rubric really saves you so much time so you're able to do that and i understand that sometimes we have 100 papers 50 papers so i recommend really learning rubric which is an app it's a script and it's an extension so it works all together in one but it's worth learning now peggy george actually shared this on twitter and i thought it was really really great you go to makeuseof.com if you use a different browser if you use opera for example um, and any other kind of browser, actually, this article is pretty helpful. So what it does is it tells you how to install all of these extensions that I've shown you, which are mostly on Chrome. You can find them. I actually did another, um, I did do an article recently. You can find it at Teacher Bootcamp. I'll try to post it in the chat box. And it tells you um, where, you know, Internet Explorer or, and, and the other places that have where you can find those that I recommended today in other browsers. But the majority of these I've tested on my Google Chrome. So if you go to makeuseof.com, you're going to find how you can actually um, take a look at um, take a look at this article, and then you can install and use it. So an American TESOL on the blog, we have actually also have an article on using extensions with language learners. Um, but I also want to share with you in the chat box one on how to use, um, these are 40 recommended extensions, actually, um, on this particular one. And um, on Firefox, it isn't called an 
extension is actually called an add-on. And for Internet Explorer, it's called a plugin. So um, depending on your browser, it's going to be called different things. OK, so just to let you know that. And then you can find, of course, all of these. If you go to my Pearl Trees under Google Tools, um, you'll, if you keep scrolling, you're going to see one that says Chrome Browser, and that's where it's going to highlight a lot of different tons and tons of extensions, uh, whether you teach math or science or if you teach different types of languages, if you teach geography, if you teach CLIL, content language integrated learning, then you'll be able to find an extension for that. <laughs> So thank you so much for coming today. You can uh, find our recordings on YouTube um, at user YouTube. Search for ATESOL is the user. You can go to AmericanTESOL.com slash blogger, and you can also find the recordings there. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great, safe weekend, and stay dry. Eh.